Yes, come on. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it was very insightful and yeah, I learned a lot. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to ma make one comment and one question. Uh, the comment is about um, this idea, just quickly, uh, it just irritates me. I, I just wanted to get it off my chest. <laughs> this idea that kind of France and, uh, and the British kind of go through the contentious water to make sure that everyone's abiding by the rules uh, I think that's um, I think that's a little bit disingenuous to the fact that it's actually enforcing uh, and showing its military support for its allies in the region, um, and I think we should just be honest about that uh, again. Um, and then the other question I had was about um, your opinion on the most recent uh, developments around the. Uh, uh, the submarines that aren't being made by, uh, by France anymore, that Australia has now chosen the, the US and the UK as allies, and what that means for French uh, 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 diplomatic, uh, maritime uh, 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 relations. Um, yeah, that's okay. questions. Thank you. Well, so uh, your question is about the, uh, the Australian uh, 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 decision to stop the contract with the French uh, submarine maker, Naval Group, and go with the uh, 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 not yet existing uh, uh, contract with the US or the UK to uh, build uh, new submarines. Um, well, I think there have been many comments, even by the uh, political uh, 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 the political side in France, with surprise, with the uh, deception, and uh, and as chief of the navy, I, I, I went regularly to Australia, and I had very very strong ties with the uh, with the Australian navy. We've been working a lot with them, not only around Australia, not only uh, 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 in Southeast Asia but also uh, in the northwestern Indian Ocean. We've, we, we've been uh, 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 together uh, striking and, uh, the uh, herring, uh, uh, <coughs> the export of herring out of Afghanistan to Europe. The, this uh, herring is going through uh, the Indian Ocean and then Africa. And it was, uh, uh, we had to strike this uh, traffic and uh, uh, prevent this, uh, the economic uh, uh, stability of this traffic. So, a big surprise uh, uh, and uh, some uh, <coughs> anger in France about the way things have been done uh, and uh, hidden by, uh, by our counterpart who, who you, in which we, with whom we were working very confidently. So, it has been said many times. Uh, <coughs> On the fact that they are going for nuclear, it, has, it, it, it was a question from the very beginning. Uh, do you want to go nuclear or do you want to go uh, 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 conventional uh, propulsion? And uh, in, uh, well, it, it, it was uh, something the, the Australian people have been thinking about and, and uh, one of their arguments to go for conventional propulsion was that uh, uh, to deal with nuclear power, you need to have a large industrial base. You'll need to have, uh, 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 well, as we have in France, we have nuclear reactors on our submarines and our, on our aircraft carrier, and we would not be able to, to deal with them properly if we would not have the expertise of a large number of people for designing the reactors, for uh, uh, running them, for uh, repairing them, for controlling them. You have a lot of procedures, a lot of techniques that, uh, uh, that requires a large number of people. And, and in Australia, there is no nuclear industry. Um, so it has been a question from the beginning and, and, and they could have changed their mind, but they could have changed their mind and, and talk about this uh, 
uh, uh, new requirements with the uh, with the country they they had signed a contract with. This was the question, and uh, well, this uh, well the other thing is: uh, <clears throat> Are we concerned by this region of the world? We France, we French people. Are we concerned with that, or were we concerned just because we had this industrial contract in Australia? And my feeling is that we are concerned. We are concerned because we have two million people living in this, in the Indo-Pacific region, well, from in New Caledonia or uh, uh, French Polynesia down to Reunion Island. That makes two two million people that that are French. The second thing is that as I showed you, we depend on what's happening in this part of the world. We depend for, for uh, 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 our trade, we depend for our energy, and we cannot be absent, we cannot be, uh, 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 we cannot say this is, this, this is not our concern. And so this is why France has issued an Indo-Pacific strategy, and this is why Europe has issued, uh, six, well, six months ago, an Indo-Pacific strategy. Not, 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 not only France, but the all countries of EU have decided that they were concerned about what was happening there because the, of the economic weight of Southeast Asia, because of the uh, tension in Southeast Asia, because of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the discussion about international law. If you, if you, if you weaken the international law, then what do you have in hand for enforcing peace or for uh, 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 solving the tensions between two countries? No, it's about um, ensuring that the interests of, of France are met. Um, but uh, the second part of what you said, I'm sorry, it, it's, it's kind of like this idea that France is this benevolent peacekeeper, which, which just isn't the case if you look at any of the things in the support for the US and their military and their navy uh, projects. If you look 50 years ago at the colonial relations, it's, it's, I think it's just disingenuous and I, I really want to just re reject this idea that it's, France is this benevolent peacekeeper in maritime uh, things for, for for the sake of peace of the world, it, it's just not fair, and, and I, I would just like to. No, to that, that's state. that's not what I said. Okay. I said that uh, I said that our uh, 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 we depend on what's happening there. We depend for our economy, but we depend also for our uh, 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 for the tools of the international relations, and one of the tools is the international law, and if in if in some places. This international law is weakened. You may think that you're concerned with, with this uh, 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 event. Sure, but it's out of the interest of France and France's interests, not for the general public, international good, and that, that's just kind of my contention. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Major C. Korhan from Turkey. Um, yeah, we're a bunch of heterodox economists here, so we, we, what we fundamentally do is questioning where money goes into in this system, right? And there is, there is, uh, and the military industry complex um, is one of the contested areas, I think, uh, in terms of that, the money that goes into the complex and what we could achieve instead, um, expanding this uh, arms race and all that. Um, as a former chief of staff of, of, of the French Navy, do you share the same um, concerns as you've been also uh, informed about the potential impacts of climate change uh, and the ways in which we should deal uh, with the negative impacts and outcomes of climate change in the future? Oh, you mean uh, the, the, uh, the general balance of the, uh, the general balance of the budgets of the countries? And the, way, the ways in which th those budgets uh, are allocated to certain industries that favor arms race, the expansions of military activity in, in oceans, inland, uh, the technology uh, that goes with it as well. Okay. 
Well, uh, 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 um, well, yes, I, I was I was concerned by that. I was concerned by that, and I was concerned by uh, uh, um, by the direction we, our uh, country and our society was uh, uh, heading for. And uh, this is this is the uh, the objective of the elections. In an election, the different parties. Uh, um, make a projection on what will be the societies in uh, 10 years or in 15 years. So what, what effort they want to put on education, on uh, uh, sustainab sustainability, on uh, social systems, on defense. Okay? But the idea that you could go without any defense, uh, uh, any defense uh, uh, capability, I don't think this is realistic. I don't think this is realistic. I don't think if you go to, uh, uh, to some countries in Eastern Europe that, that feel the pressure of their neighbors, you cannot, you, they, they, would, they wouldn't, well, they wouldn't, uh, 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 for them the, there is an immediate threat and uh, they wouldn't think about uh, being in a world where there will never be any more uh, tension and maybe fights, but uh, in fact we have been we have been living in in peace for since the end of World War Two, at least on our on our soil, uh, uh, and many people in Europe are very far from the concern that some other countries knows very well about their security, the security of their people. And I think things are changing now. And uh, 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 this uh, quietness we've been enjoying for decades may be, uh, 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 may be changing in, uh, and may be at risk in, uh, in the following years. And as a military people, but, but mainly as a citizen, my my belief is that we need to protect our country, we need to protect our citizens, and this has a price. And all the, uh, the, uh, the question in uh, uh, elections is just to balance the expenses. And among the, uh, 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 the weight you have to balance is defense. I have a question myself. Uh, you are talking about this part of the world with Philippines, with China, claiming part of the... Uh, how do you see uh, the situation evolving in the next 10, 20 years within this region? I mean, China is uh, really powerful. Uh, it really wants to, to keep, uh, to, ex to expand, to extend, and uh, it's a uh, uh, maritime territory. So. Uh, what could be, uh, I mean, what could stop this? I mean, do you think France will? <laughs> no, well, I, 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 there is something I don't understand in, in, the, uh, in, uh, uh, in the position of China. They are weakening the uh, international law of the sea. And in the same time, they are the real, they, they benefit from it. The, the incredible expansion of the economy is based on maritime traffic. As I showed you, seven of the, tens, of the ten largest ports in the world are in China because of their enormous economic activity. And they, have, they can export all these goods because of the freedom of navigation. And they are putting this freedom of navigation, which is a result of the international law of the sea, they are putting it at risk for a few rocks. Well, there are, well, there are history. Well, China is claiming historical rights on this area, and but historical rights are not in the uh, 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 in the international law of the sea. But but I think that the uh, the the political cost is very heavy, and, and the risk for uh, and I think they are really taking high risk in uh, shaking the, the, the law of the sea. Why? Uh, uh, I think they, well, 
uh, on a more general. So on this on this subject, like like Greece and Turkey, you have moment a period of tensions, and then the tension is decreasing. Is decreasing thanks to uh, 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 thanks to uh, 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 either diplomatic mechanism or a, a jurisdiction uh, and arbitration, and uh, so the uh, uh, <coughs> the importance of keeping in touch, of keeping uh, 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 talking uh, with the, the with the other side is really important. Is really important, but the risk of miscalculation of uh, 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 is also is is non is not null. And this is a real, uh, 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 a real concern. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the uh, for, for all this discussion. And I'm uh, Xin Miao. I'm from China. So, so I would like to say something like uh, from my perspective. Yes. So firstly, I would like to. Uh, kind of question the international law, because it's not only about the UN clause, UN clause itself, but also like before we talk about the trades and how it's not benefiting those least developed countries, like based on the like pharmaceutical, like public health uh, aspects. And I'm thinking like if this is also we can like apply similar logic to UN clause as well. Like it is not actually by itself a fair enough law. And if there is any like unbalanced power relationship that was play a part in while well, it's we develop the law. And yeah, for example, because it doesn't for example like it doesn't uh, acknowledge the historical rights of the territory and if you just abandon the political thoughts of it you just think of some people who stayed on the island since the very beginning of there is people in the island and suddenly with the law you see like it's 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 been a question like which country you belong to which citizen you belong to so that's part of my concern and also I find one thing very interesting is that the US actually doesn't <laughs> ratify this law yeah so the US, what? The US doesn't ratify UNICLA yes because uh -huh. China signed it and ratified it uh -uh. so like yes. it's a paradox uh -uh. it's a paradox oh uh, is this kind of is the law <laughs> causing the intention the tensions or is it tries to solve the tensions? It's really hard to tell. That's okay. part of my opinion. I know I don't know the whole story, but it's just no, from my uh, well, perspective. Well, on that, I, uh, I cannot speak for, for, for the US government, but I'm not sure they have ratified a lot of international treaties because of the, uh, of the internal mechanism of the, uh, of the US politics. Uh, and although they have not ratified, Unlike China, uh, 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 they have always claimed that they will respect and close. Okay, but uh, yes, it may be it may appear uh, 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 a paradox. Yes, yes. Um, just like there was a question before also, like whether the agreement is actually causing the problem or. We have an understanding that like there's something missing on the, on the agreement, which could be the historical rights. If you maybe you could also develop in that. Uh, yes, but uh, 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 the difficulty I think is that when you when uh, 160 countries have agreed on something, uh, uh, it's difficult to 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 come back on it and to change it. It's not impossible. Uh, uh, as I told you, there is a new treaty which is uh, under uh, 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 examination, BBNG, and I'm not well. I'm not sure that that things could be uh, changed like that. But what is what is? Uh, 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 I think the international law of the sea. Uh, the people who have been 
uh, 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 who are using international law of the sea, they know that different countries will have a different appreciation on this, the application of this law. For example, if you have a, uh, <coughs> if you have two countries facing each other and, and, and close, for example, from uh, 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 100 nautical miles, well, uh, uh, where do they start their EEZ? Well, the law says, in this case, well, you should find the line in the middle, okay? Or, if you have two countries, up here is the frontier, this is the two countries, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the EEZ is, uh, is going in the, uh, well, the frontier of the EEZ is going in the water, uh, uh, prolonging the, uh, uh, the frontier. But if, the, if, for example, at this place is like that, well, this country will say, okay, I extend the frontier like that. And this one will say, no, the frontier of the EZ will be like that. This is what is happening between Lebanon and Israel at the present time. And even though Israel and Lebanon are still at war, they have decided to find an agreement to use jurisdictional mechanism to resolve their problem because they have found gas in this, in this area. And they know that before being able to, to drill, they have to find an agreement, even if the country on the other side is at war with them. And, and in France, we had some uh, 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 disagreement with the UK for the uh, 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 Les Îles anglo normand Jersey Guernsey. Uh, it was in the uh, late 70s, and we asked an arbitration system to uh, determine who was, uh, 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 where should be the frontiers between France and the UK around Jersey and Guernsey. So the, the, the problem is not, not that two countries have a different appreciation on the application of the law of the sea. This is normal, this is normal life. The problem is when the two countries don't find a, a, a way to solve their uh, a misunderstanding. And I think this is the problem. And when Philippines went to uh, an international uh, 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 tribunal and asked for uh, uh, an, uh, 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 an assessment, well, this assessment was refused by China. And, and this is, I think this is a, a part of the problem. So, but I, I don't think any of, the, of these countries is, uh, 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 have an interest in uh, going to an extreme tension for, uh, well, except if there is some, some internal uh, pressure for internal politics. But objectively, Objectively, there is no reason. There is a few. There is not many gas in this uh, area. There is not many f fishing areas. There is uh, or things. All these things could be solved. They could be shared. There are many ways to solve this to reduce this tension. But we are not. I, I don't feel that uh, uh, we are on the way to reduce this tension. But but it may happen. For, for internal political reasons, probably. Hello, um, my name is Ted. I'm from Canada. Uh, thank you for the uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, I have a question which is more related to the economics um, of the shipping. So you showed us this, that really nice map with the trade routes um, and uh, um, I'm curious, I know this is, you're more an expert in international relations and, and, and things like that, um, but in terms of the structure of this global trade, um, is there kind of large market concentration of, uh, like who owns these 50,000 ships um, and how are they run? Um, um, 
Would you be able to elaborate on that, if you could? Mm -hmm. You're from Canada? Yes. OK, there is a dispute between Canada and the US on the application of the maritime law. And uh, so it's not, not only a South China Sea. And uh, uh, for example, I, I will answer your question late uh, after that. Well, for example, <coughs> here, here Canada says these are internal waters in the north of Canada. Uh, uh, the route that goes between the islands, it's in Canadian territory. And the U.S. says no. This is not international. This is not internal waters. This is not territorial waters. These are international straits, which are under the regime of freedom of navigation, and they have the same argument the the U.S. with the Russian uh, on this place here, which is called the Laptev door. On the Laptev door, uh, uh, back to the uh, no uh, here he, here back during the uh, the. The communist revolution, uh, uh, Lenin decided that it was, this was internal waters, although it's large. And the US are disputing this, uh, this question. OK. So uh, uh, who owns the ship? And uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, the largest owners are uh, uh, Chinese. Uh, Danish, French, Italian. But the, 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 the largest number of big companies are Chinese. And uh, in France, it's called CMA CGM, uh, based in Marseille. In, uh, in Denmark, it's Maersk. And uh, so these ship owners have uh, uh, founded, built alliances to, to, to to uh, organize their uh, shipping lines. And in fact, what, what has been changed with the, uh, uh, with the container is that, and before COVID, was the idea that you have a line going from the northern range of Europe to, uh, to China, and, uh, and you have hubs like uh, Antwerp, uh, Algeciras, Piraeus, uh, Dubai, um, Singapore, Ningbo. And, uh, and the idea is that every two days, every th three days, you have a ship arriving in this harbor. So there is a regularity of the ship on these lines. And you need to have several ship owners in order to have a, number of, uh, a sufficient number of ships. So with that, you can have a regularity in the, uh, uh, um, in the logistic chain out of the, uh, out of the port. Okay? So they have been, uh, uh, these alliances had uh, uh, <coughs> organized this, uh, this type of lines. Okay? What we are seeing now is disorganizing the lines. Because you have traffic jam be, be, uh, in front of the port. Some ports are closed because of the COVID. And so there is a big mess. Uh, uh, okay, the other thing that ship owners are doing is that they are building bigger and bigger ships. And these bigger and bigger ships uh, imply that the ports have to adjust to the size of the ship. So they are in the position of imposing to the ports the systems to, uh, well, the, uh, 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 the wharves, uh, uh, all the systems to embark and disembark the container. They put the pressure on the, on the different harbors. And doing that also with the gigantism, uh, uh, <coughs> I think the, uh, the international regulation for the security of the ship is not strong enough. And uh, uh, if you try to, to, to tow the largest uh, uh, um, container ship in the world, you just tear its nose. You destroy the ship. The ship is not able to be towed. So there are 
there are some problems uh, uh, related with this uh, uh, um, <coughs> um, pole position of the ship owners compared with the infrastructure of the ports and related to the security of the sea. My name is Irai, I'm from Spain, and I have two questions. The first one is about the, the Arctic Sea. You talked about the possibilities that it's going to open for new commercial routes, but also there are a lot of resources underneath, and I just wanted to ask you which are the countries that are implied in like getting access to these resources, and how do you think it's going to unfold? Because unlike the other conflicts, in this case, it's not like uh, within the exclusive economic zone of any country. So how do you get access or rise to this place? And then the second question is, uh, in Europe, in the aerospace system, we have something called Airbus, which is a conglomerate of uh, different industrial hubs in all Europe to produce aircrafts. Why don't we have a naval Airbus in, in Europe? Why don't we have like a industry that's more intertwined to build uh, both warships and naval ships for, for trade? Okay. <coughs> so about the, the, the Arctic, uh, what's happening in the Arctic. Uh, well, you have EEZ in the Arctic. Uh, Russia has the largest EEZ. Uh, and, uh, and then Canada and, uh, and Denmark. Um, uh, these countries are, and, and the U.S. with Alaska, and uh, these countries uh, uh, meet regularly in the Arctic Council. Uh, the Arctic Council also uh, 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 gathered the, uh, um, how the how are they called? Indigenous people of the uh, uh, around the Arctic. They have decided to uh, uh, forbid fishing in the Arctic Sea for the following 20 years, I think. And uh, the main activity is uh, gas exploitation uh, in the Arctic, but it's on land. It's in, uh, in the Yamal, the Yamal uh, region, which is, uh, which is around here. Uh, the, so the, the, uh, the Yamal uh, region, which means in uh, Nenets, Finisterre. Like, uh, like in France and like in Spain. Finisterra, the, end, the, the, the land of the end. <coughs> there is an enormous uh, gas site there. Uh, I think it's 27,000 billion uh, 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 meters cube of gas. And uh, there is a an, uh, uh, Russian, French and Chinese who are implied in these... Uh, 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 in this uh, gas uh, exploitation there. And then to take out the gas from uh, 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 the middle of Siberia to Europe, the Russians have invented uh, 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 gas transport ships that, that are also icebreakers. And these icebreakers goes from, uh, uh, they just go from uh, 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 the Yamal Peninsula down to Norway and go back to the Yamal Peninsula. And then from Norway, Tromsø, some regular ships used to uh, uh, design to transport gas uh, 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 go from Tromsø to the rest of Europe. Okay? Uh, well, and to answer, the, the, you, uh, so this gas transport uh, uh, a ship that are also able to, to break ice they cost around 350 million euros, while the largest uh, uh, container ship cost around 150 million uh, euros. Okay? So why don't we have an Airbus uh, for uh, 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 naval construction? Uh, I think many people have think, thought about that. And, uh, and uh, um, Mainly, well, I think ma mainly uh, because of employment and also because of uh, national autonomy. And some countries don't want to, uh, to, to have their uh, most precious 
pieces of equipment built in uh, other countries. So the, you, you're right, the risk is that all this uh, may disappear uh, if uh, we don't have a world-class uh, uh, big enough company to be uh, 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 to make to make equipment at at, at the base price, and uh, this is a, this is a real problem. And uh, I think uh, 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 the the U.S. or Turkey or China or uh, or Russia uh, are more and more competitive on this. Uh, on, on the ships and as well as the uh, the commercial ship and now most of the commercial ships are built in Korea or in Japan or in China and not anymore in Europe so we may lose part of this industry and this is a real risk but so far the governments as well as the uh, the companies have not found the uh, the solution there have been a tentative between uh, Spain and France a few years ago and uh, it broke down and uh, uh, during the five last years, it was between Italy, Fincantieri, and France. And, uh, but uh, but it's, it's slow, it's slow to, to gain momentum. Uh, thank you so much for your talk. I'll, I'll try to keep it short, but I have three different questions. Uh. But just quick comments is fine if we don't have that much time. The first one would be about... Um, uh, what you were talking about earlier with the Gulf Stream and tipping points. And I just wanted to ask whether you can elaborate any more on those climate tipping points, whether if we have a problem with the Gulf Stream weakening, this uh, possibility of s s storing the warm water under, under well, in the d deeper layers of the oceans uh -huh. um, is disappearing. And then the second one is re regards to illegal fishing and overfishing, and also what you were talking about, the conference now on protection of biodiversity and what do you think for you are the best ways for, for France or the EU to go ahead against um, against these well illegal and overfishing um, and then the f a third issue oh, I didn't say I'm where I'm from I'm from Germany and the UK so kind of uh, Europe um, but I'm, I'm the the recent news from the the channel with the, the drowning of another boat of uh, refugees is really making me question again and again why are we not dealing with this problem of, of people dying in our seas and why are we seeing it in a military way only and why are we well even penalizing and criminalizing people trying to save lives like the UK has of course that's a different context from here but the UK has literally out outlawed uh, sea rescue of refugees, which is quite, quite um, well, inhumane. But yeah, so those three things, the tipping points, the fishing and uh, migration, if you will. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, so the Gulf Stream will not stop. Because the Gulf Stream is due to, uh, to the wind regime, to uh, uh, the rotation of Earth, and to the fact that uh, America is a continent, and that the, 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 the ocean current cannot go over America. So it goes to the west, and at one point, it meets the land, and it's concentrated uh, 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 there. You have the same, f the same feature in the Pacific Ocean, and it's called the Kuroshio. It's along Japan. Okay? What may change is the deep convection in the Norwegian Sea. It may change if, uh, the, the, uh, for example, if uh, you have a, 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 an increasing rate of melting in Greenland, then you will have fresh water going in the sea. And uh, on the surface water, and, it, and uh, uh, you will change the salinity of the, of the surface water. And then, if you change this salinity, this, uh, even, even if the water is cold, she will not be dense enough to go down to the, to the bottom of the ocean. And then you will prevent this water to dive. 
and you will probably have, it will be probably colder in Europe than it is today. Because when this water dives, it takes with it some of the coldness of the, uh, of the Arctic uh, region. Okay? So it's more, uh, uh, the Gulf Stream will not stop, but the water, instead of diving, will, will, will continue its journey in the cycle around the northern Atlantic. Okay? So this is the first thing. Uh, the thir second thing is about illegal fishing. Um, Uh, 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 okay, what, what can I say about illegal fishing? Uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, you have la large organization, a lot of, of uh, boats, fish, uh, 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 ships that are practicing illegal fishing. Uh, I think that our capability to track them, to find them, is better than it has ever been, uh, uh, thanks to uh, AI, for example, uh, thanks to uh, uh, satellite observations. Uh, but then uh, it's something to detect illegal activity, an illegal activity. It's another thing to catch them and, uh, and to, uh, to punish them. Okay. Uh, um, it may it may have a very uh, 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 real impact on some on some societies, like in Western Africa. In Western Africa, Senegal, for example, uh, relies a lot on uh, fishing, and uh, illegal fishermen are debalancing uh, 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 the, the equilibrium. So Europe is implied in uh, 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 training the navies of these uh, uh, navies and coast guards of this uh, part of the world in order to, to, to catch, to fight against drug trafficking, which is heavy also from South America to, uh, uh, to West Africa, and, uh, and illegal fishing. Uh, um, oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think that if you s if you look at what happened in Europe, our countries were competing for fishing. They were competing for uh, uh, fishing more than the neighbor and in in a larger place, and we were able to find an agreement and to find an agreement to uh, restrain our fishing activity in order to. Uh, to, to keep the stocks of fish uh, alive, and we are able to do that. And so I hope that this example could be uh, uh, replied in some other places of, of the world. Okay, but you're right, it's a concern. There are more and more illegal fishing. And, but as I told you, I think our tools are better than ever. And your last question was about refugees and the militarization of the problem uh, instead of helping these people. But there is no militarization of the problem. And, 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 and I know the guys who, who go at sea with these, uh, 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 with these refugees. And they, they know that it's dangerous for them just to, to fall in the water. Because the water is very cold. And they may die in a few minutes. So if there is the slightest risk of one of them to go in the water, they will not act. They will not move. They will not take any risk. So their primary concern is not enforce the law or be, uh, 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 conduct a mili military operation. It's the life of the people on the ship, on the boat. It's really the case. And it's, 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 and it's a problem. Because uh, uh, doing that, you could say that you help, you help the traffickers of these people. You have the traffickers who are organizing the, uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, migration across Europe, across the channel. 
okay? But uh, I'm, I'm sure that both in the uh, UK and in France, uh, uh, the main concern of the people who are acting at sea is preserve the life of the people before any other consideration. Very, very, very last question. question. Does, that, does that then in this rationale also imply that uh, these missions there, these boats, would not interact in helping the people on the boat because they might be like just out of this argumentation you just presented, that then the boat inter the intervening could threaten the people, maybe because the boat is too big, then the people, uh, then the, the, the your, the, the, the military boats are staying far away from the boats and then the people are drowning without the intervention of the military because that's at least uh, how it looks for me. And of course you can say this is like the moral dilemma that we are always having, um, but still I see that the Marines are not helping the people there, and they're not saving them. I know, I, I know, I, I know, I, I, I disagree. It, it's, well, well, first, there is not only military people. There are policemen, there are, there are uh, 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 ONGs, NGOs, there are uh, people from, how do you les it, en mer. Uh, uh, an association which is dedicated to uh, 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 save the people uh, who, are, uh, who are at sea. And none of them, none of them will put something before uh, uh, preserve the life of the people. There is, there is no, n no other priority. And if someone goes in the water, they will they will take him. And when you see ships coming back to, to, to French ports uh, uh, with a lot of refugees, it's because the ship of the refugees or the boat, or because they were afraid, or because they asked. They were asked, okay, do you want to come? Do you think uh, uh, will, uh, well, I think it's a, a very complicated situation where you, you will not tell people, I will help you to cross the channel because you're here to, to, to to prevent that, but you will never put them at risk. And, and if they go on your ship, on your boat, it's only when it's, or well, only if it's totally safe for them. So, so therefore my question, could it happen that the boat is staying further away just to, to be not in the situation of being responsible for the death of these people? Well, oh, n n no, not, not in the channel, n not in the channel. For example, if you see in Libya, in Libya you have a lot of refugees uh, uh, coming from the coast uh, uh, and it was almost a, a, a course of action. They, they, they go off the coast and then they call for search and rescue. And they know that, well, if they call for search and rescue, then there will be a ship, an NGO ship, coming close and, and taking the refugees on, on, on board and bringing them to Italy. So they know that there is, a, it's a, 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 there is no discussion for a sailor about that. If someone is in danger, it will be, he will be saved. Okay? Your question is, is it possible that, that some ship go far away not to be confronted to this case? Okay? Especially military Frontex. Oh, f uh, Frontex. Course, I mean, in general, because I have the feeling that this whole story of we need to protect and save everyone who is in, in danger on sea, which I grew up with, with, I'm from the northern part of Germany, this is the, the strong tradition that we need to save everyone on the sea. This is not followed by the forces with which we are paying for with our taxes on uh, the Mediterranean Sea, for example, or maybe also on the channel where I'm not an expert in. Well, I, I'm. Uh, I don't think so. But it may be possible, but, but, but uh, I, I'm, I will not answer for all the people in Frontex. Mm. But, but as a former French seller, I, I cannot imagine a ship listening to uh, 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 an SOS and, and turning back and not going to help the people mm. who have been asking for help. If, if, if I may, because I think it's a very large topic, and I think that uh, 
the, the real problem is a political problem and we can see that also for the ships of the, the NGOs willing to save people at sea uh, have been refused uh, any uh, mm -hmm. uh, flag to just to be able to go in the sea and save people. So there is a major political problem, but it goes much beyond this session, I think. So uh, uh, maybe we shall talk once about that. And um, I want to thank, because I think it was really interesting to have also your point of view, whether we, are, we agree or not on everything, but <laughs> very interesting to have your point of view. So thank you very much. And see you next time. Thank you.